Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. In the previous episode I drilled the holes in the spindle necessary to mount it on the lathe, so I can do the rest of the operations on this part with it mounted directly. This means I can run the lathe a lot faster without vibration problems and make cleaner cuts. My design specifies the central shaft diameter is 14mm, but I'm inclined to use a larger dimension for a couple of reasons. Firstly the faceplate has a 6mm hole board in it, which doesn't leave much surrounding material for screws to secure to the shaft. Secondly the material for the shaft has proved difficult to machine and shown signs of work hardening, so I'm nervous about attempting to tap narrow threads into it. I opted for a diameter of 18mm so I can fit 3mm tapped holes comfortably in the available material. Despite the earlier problems, the spindle material machines very smoothly now that it's securely mounted. I finished the end of the shaft very carefully as this is a critical surface for ensuring the faceplate runs true. I've chosen to mount the plate onto the spindle by cutting a pocket into the back exactly the diameter of the shaft. The inside diameter of the pocket provides the register to ensure the plate runs consistently true and I use screws to hold the plate firmly in place on the shaft. The centre hole has been used as a reference for all the features on the plate so far so it's a much better reference for the pocket than the outer diameter. I started roughing the pocket using the 12mm boring bar, but I had to switch to a 10mm bar because the lower side of the bar was rubbing against the inner diameter of the pocket. The pocket is very shallow, so I could mount the bar very close to the insert, leaving minimal protrusion to keep vibration down.
but the finishing pass as I crept up very slowly on the final dimension as cutting it too large would be disastrous. The shaft fit very nicely inside the register but wasn't sitting securely against the back of the pocket. It rocked as if the surfaces were very slightly domed. I checked the flatness of the end of the shaft off camera and couldn't find any problem so I suspected the back face of the pocket was to blame. I cut very light relief on the inner half of the diameter to ensure the outer parts of the faces could sit securely together. With the centre relieved, the fit was much more stable. The rocking you see here is just one side of the shaft pulling away from the plate. Drilling and tapping the screw holes is the perfect opportunity to use the Proxon dividing head. It's not particularly rigid or accurate, but I can mount the spindle directly on it as it has the same chuck mounting as the lathe. I used an edge finder to find the outer diameter on one side only, as I already know exactly what the diameter is, and mark the first hole with a 120 degree spotting drill. I'm using an M3 thread, which the book says needs a 2.5mm tapping drill, but I started with a 2.6mm drill because the material is stuffed to work. Because this isn't one of the standard sizes from a good drill set, I started with a twist drill from a much cheaper set of many non-standard sizes at 0.1mm increments. You certainly get what you pay for. The cheaper drill was very slow and partly disintegrated near the end of the required depth. For the other holes I used a good quality tin coated 2mm twist drill and then expanded the hole to size with another of the cheaper 2.6mm drills. I was very concerned about making sure the threads were tapped straight, so I made a tap follower especially for this job. I'll upload a video showing the full tap follower build shortly after this one, and there will be a link at the top right once that video is available. The tap follower worked great, though the spring is a little softer than it should be. Having proved that it works, I did the next two holes in parallel. The dividing head doesn't lock properly or have a vernier scale, but it uses a toothed wheel to snap into place the fixed divisions. 
I had the 48 division wheel installed so it would snap at 120 degree intervals. Drilling with a decent drill was much easier and the cheap drill seemed to have no trouble following the pilot hole. Here's a better shot of the tap follower at work. Drilling the clearance holes in the plate gave me pause. I needed to drill them without moving anything to ensure they're perfectly aligned, but couldn't think of a way to hold them well. As this is a drilling operation without any side load, I decided to just rest the part in place and use my hand to keep it steady. Once I had one hole complete, I used a screw to hold the parts together to drill the other two.
The final step was to use an end mill to counter more space for the screw heads. The cap screws here are temporary and will be replaced with custom slotted cheese head screws like a proper horology project should have. For this operation the dividing head wasn't nearly stable enough so I remounted the plate firmly on the table. The main assembly is now complete and most of the rest of the project will be making the three clamps to hold the work. This will be a very different direction for the project, I'm really looking forward to it.